folks. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, today is episode number six of Food by Fire Friday. And today on Diplomat Dad, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making little portable camping stoves with soup cans. So there might be a bunch of reasons you might want to do this. One of the reasons, maybe you're just a do-it-yourselfer and you like to budget things. Uh, this is an excellent way to create yourself a little uh, hobo stove or uh, soup can stove. Either way, um, it's an excellent piece of equipment. I haven't had one in a long time. Um, I figured it's uh, time to get one or make one rather. So in order to make the uh, hobo stove or the uh, soup can stove or whichever you want to call it, you just need a few things. You need your drill. Uh, a couple different drill bits, you need a little bit of chicken wire. Uh, you need one can or two cans. There's two different methods of making this. Well, there's a bunch of different methods. However, um, you have the one can and the two can version. Um, and however you decide to make them is, uh, is up to you. But yeah, you'll figure it out when you see it. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get into it. Let me show you guys how to do this. And then uh, after we get this thing made, uh, we will cook something up and have a little snack. All right, folks. So uh, I hope you guys can hear me. It's uh, raining pretty good right now. But anyhow, um, so this is what we've got here. We've got our smaller can, our larger can. You're gonna want one that's slightly shorter than the other one there. One is gonna end up sitting inside the other, but um, that'll make more sense here when I explain the rest of the process of how to make this. Got your different drill bits. Gonna need a couple different sizes here. Gonna need your uh, tin snips for cutting your chicken wire and for making some cuts in your can. So, let's go ahead and hop to it. Oh, and of course you drill. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to make some holes in the top of our can. We want to make them evenly spaced. We're going to eventually make two rows. So I'm just trying my best here to make these even. Okay, so I ended up with, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots there. So now I'm gonna make a second row, just slightly below the first row, and in alternating positions. All right, once you've got all those done, you're ready to start doing your first bit of drilling. Alright, so there you have it. You got your first two rows done. Now you're going to grab a uh, larger bit and you're going to enlarge those just a little bit. Alright, so now we're here. We're going to take these first holes we made and enlarge them. There we go. And that's how you want that to look. So that's our first can. That's the big can. Top, bottom. All right, so now we're gonna take our small can here and right into the center on the top, we're gonna take a 3 16th inch bit and we're just gonna drill a series of holes. All right, so there you have it. That's what the bottom of your small can should look like. All right, now we got our little can and our big can. Uh, what we're gonna do now, just like we put these holes alternating on the big can, on the same side that you put the uh, perforations on the bottom of the small can. So here, we're gonna do the same thing we did here. So we're gonna do some alternating holes and then uh, we'll be ready for the next step. All right, now we can drill. All right, there we 
go. So now we've got the bottom looking like that. Got the sides of the bottom looking like so. And now on the top, we're gonna drill one single even row all the way around. All right. All right, there we go. All right, now we're gonna take our drill bit that we used to make the larger holes in the big can, and we're gonna make all the holes in the side of the small can um, a little larger. The ones on the bottom are gonna stay just like they are. And that right there is how your small can should look when it's done. So now what we want to do is we want to take our big can here. We're going to set it down. We're going to take our small can. And we're going to put it so that the top sits right on top of here. We're going to get it centered. And then we're going to draw a line around our can. All right. There we go. All right, now we're gonna draw a circle right in the center there. All right. And if you can get your snips in, you're gonna start cutting. Okay, so what you're going to end up doing, ultimately, is sitting this can down inside that hole. So before you cut that too big, what you're uh, going to want to do at this point is grab yourself a file and file down all those edges and then just work it till you get it to where this can, the small can, will slide right on in. All right. That's a little snug, but snug like that, definitely better than loose. And it's pretty much gonna stay together for the most part anyways. I just wanna make sure I get uh, most of these burrs off of here. Okay, we'll put that back on in. All right, you guys, that's it. All right, really quick before we get to cooking. Um, something we're gonna need to do here is we need to create uh, a pot holder. So what I'm gonna use is some of this chicken wire here. Basically just get a little roll of it, kind of put it like so, and you're gonna take it to the top of your can here, and you're basically just gonna size it up so that it sits right on that rim right there. And uh, you want to make it about about yay high. Um, you don't want it too high because you don't want it top heavy. Um, but just about three inches, two and a half, three inches or so, and um, you'll be good to go. So let me go ahead and get that banged out, and then uh, we'll get to cooking.
All right, one last little thing here before we get to cooking. Just want to show you that if you take this, if it's sized properly, you should be able to take it and work it right down into the bottom there. So right here you have yourself an entire cooking system. All you gotta do is uh, have a, a lighting source and uh, some small twigs and sticks and you're ready to rock and roll. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. We've got our uh, hobo stove there or our uh, soup can stove. I got it sitting on the uh, rocket stove here. Got the stove upside down just so we can use the surface here to cook on. Um, for uh, lighting this fire or for feeding this fire I'm going to use these palm fronds here these are all dried out uh, you can use really anything but because these are extremely abundant and um, very dry even if it's rainy season you can always find these things dry I'm going to shave this up into some uh, smaller pieces get a nice pile of that going and see how well we can uh, cook our meal here on just these All right, got ourselves a little pile here. Right, so we got our fire going. Just gonna let that do its thing for a few minutes. And we'll get to cooking. Look at that, nice and sturdy. Ain't going anywhere. Nice. All right, so just one more quick thing as a precautionary uh, tactic here. Before we actually put our food in our uh, skillet there and start cooking, we're just gonna burn everything off that's on that can. Any residue or glue that's left from the paper that was on there, just any toxins or what have you that might be on the surface of the can. So we're going to let that burn off. Go for a few minutes here. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to let my skillet uh, get nice and heated up. Looking good. So what we're going to eat here, a little omelet I made. Got three eggs, some milk. Some Carolina Reapers out of the garden, some sausage, and some onion. Just gonna dump that right in there here in a second and have a feast. There we go. So what you can do um, for this style of cooking, you can get yourself uh, some Ziploc bags, um, make up some different uh, scrambled egg mixes, what have you, and you can freeze them. Uh, just in like that little small bag there, a little sandwich size. Make yourself, I don't know, a handful of them, however many you think you might need on a camping trip or something, and um, put them in a cooler with some ice. They'll stay frozen for a couple of days. And then, um, yeah, you've got some nice, uh, scrambled egg mix for your camping adventures or what have you. So something else you can do just to help feed the fire. You can just feed in uh, some skinny pieces into the top here. That just keeps you from having to actually lift your uh, pan or your pot off of there. You just feed them into the side wherever you feel that it's necessary. See how we're looking here. It's only been on here a couple of minutes. Takes a minute for the cast iron to heat up all the way. But once it's hot, it's hot. Definitely got some action now. Now 
This skillet right here that I'm using is one of the skillets that I restored in my uh, how to restore cast iron video. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that, you can go ahead and click on the link up top there. But of course, finish watching this video. All right, a few more minutes. The only thing we need to add to this now is some good old Cholula sweet habanero hot sauce. If it ain't spicy, it ain't right. Ooh. Let's not do that. All right, let's grub out. Mm, look at that. Looking good. Mm. Oh man, that is amazing. Cool. Well, we did it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a really good time making it. I've got a couple of different types of camping stoves that I take with me, but to be completely honest, this is probably one of the most simplest ones to carry with you. Sure, it definitely takes a little bit of a uh, manufacturing to get it done but once you've got it made it's super lightweight extremely durable very efficient definitely worth having around i'm probably going to keep this with me in my uh in my camping bag now just because it's really fun to use um i put in the time to make it and uh it is efficient so i don't mind carrying around and using it on my uh on my different trips yeah, it's just great. Well, that about sums it up, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. Hopefully, you learned something new today. Uh, now you can go home and make you guys your own uh, hobo stoves. Just uh, don't go home and become a hobo. It wouldn't be good. Yeah, thanks again, you guys. I uh, appreciate all the likes and comments. Appreciate all the subscriptions, you guys. Uh, by all means, after you subscribe, hit that bell notification button. That'll keep you guys up to date for when I've got new videos coming out. Got them every week, twice a week, uh, sometimes three times a week. I am still scheduling, or I'm still, I'm still posting Fridays and Sundays uh, every now and then I got a random video but uh again thank you guys I appreciate everything and until next time we'll see you out there